Thanks very much, Tom. Wow, okay. You see, I just live my life as um, a little non-binary diva and then I'm, a, I'm an artist with a practice. It's, uh, it's quite nice to hear about these things. Um, hi, everybody. Good morning. Uh, afternoon. Sorry, good afternoon. My name is Liv, of course. Um, just a little disclaimer, if I do have to run off the workshop today, it's because uh, we're joined by young Matilda. Um, she's brand new to my family. Here she is. She's a little drag dog. She really likes lip syncing. So um, if I do have to run off today at any point because she's chewing my wires, um, I'll just let you know. But um, welcome to Drag 101, Finding a Voice. Um, yeah, let's get started. So um, I think how we're going to kick this off is explain just very briefly about um, myself. Oh, back to myself again. Um, but we're going to go through a lot of different skills today that I've picked up through being a drag artist, which I started doing when I was at NUA. And um, yeah, we'll kind of see how those transfer into one another, link into drag artistry and also other aspects of artistry as well, because it's quite the transferable art practice I've come to find. Um, so a bit about me. Uh, here is a very stunning photograph of myself. Um, so, what about me? What about me? My name's Liv. I am identify as a non-binary individual. I'm currently based in Nottingham and work across Nottingham, Norwich and London doing drag shows and drag artistry. Um, we're working on a film lately as well, but we'll hear about that later. Um, but you see, drag artists don't just pop into existence. They have to start as children. Um, so that's me, as I was very young, uh, winning my first trophy of many. I've won quite a few titles now. Um, and yeah, born in Nottingham, two sisters, um, a dog, not this one, of course, and um, uh, my mum and my dad. And yes, grew up very different, always creative, always like drawing, writing stories. And although, when I was growing up, very, very creative, but not very performative, not very dramery, which people always say, like, um, they asked me, oh, where'd you go to drama school? And I didn't really go to any drama school. So um, I don't know where that actually came from. Uh, I do like to say that there was enough drama in my life that I didn't need to um, go to drama school. <laughs> One second, let me just... <laughs> well then, well then, do a presentation. Um, but yes, and I was doing a lot of art throughout all of my education through secondary school where I did GCSE art and design um, and photography as well, um, bit of psychology, but that don't matter. And um, it was only really on the art foundation diploma I did at Nottingham City College um, that I started to explore these ideas of gender and identity within an art practice. Um, you know, everyone, in sync form is very, you know, the, you're not thinking about artistry and creativity and there's not always that respect of creativity <laughs> amongst peers from my experience. But when you get to like an art school or an arts environment, there's a lot more respect for one another I found um, that just helps these explorations and practices grow and become this. Um, but then, yeah, so I started doing that on my art foundation. And you see, I wasn't fully into drag throughout university. It was at the beginning, I was a painter, I was a sculptor, I was um, a performance artist. It was in my second year that I got into performance art. Um, and you see, painting takes so long, sculpture takes so long, all very expensive <laughs> for all the materials. But performance art for me was something that was so immediate, so in the moment, you didn't have to um, take a long time to prepare something or process it. You could just do it and make it happen and create a feeling and an emotion. It's, it's so immediate. And that's what I transferred into my drag practice towards the end of my second year of university. Um, it was February 2018 that I did my first drag show. Um, on Valentine's Day, of course, because we love drag, I guess. And um, yes, it was 
interesting at the beginning. These are some very early pictures, by the way. Um, I mean, you can see me today, so it's fine, but that's um, a photo on the left of me and my best friend, George, who um, is still part of my drag world. And we joined the same drag collective um, in 2018. So going to university, finding out about performance art and drag, watching Sasha Valora win Drag Race season nine, fabulous. But that's just individuals on their own. And when I actually found people who were also interested in the same thing, that's where we started to gain traction with putting on events, putting on shows. Um, we took over this small pub called The Birdcage, which sadly is closed down now. And we'd have these artistic club night events going on every, every month on a Thursday, I think it was. And um, the amount of community that just grew from us being artists and doing performance art, it was really inspiring. And it was all the LGBTQ plus community as well. And to think that us getting on stage and like mucking about with a lip sync was actually making space for the local queer community was like, that was a huge revelation for me in terms of my practice as an artist. And I guess it's a community organizer maybe. Hmm. But um, on the left, we have an image of the original lineup of the House of Days. Um, and then on the right, I like to call it the new wave of the House of Days, uh, kind of like X-Men, um, we have different generations of lineups. Um, but then the thing with the House of Days was that most of us were at university. So as we came to the end of our degrees, we were all splitting up and going off back to wherever or onwards to anything else. Um, so I carried on doing the House of Days under the name of Days Presents because we still wanted to keep that collective going and the community thing without having to, you know, be actually in Norwich or be in a particular place or things like that. But at this point, um, we actually dropped the day's name because we realised the community had been brought along so much, it didn't have to have a name anymore. <laughs> it just had to have a time, a place and a date. And that's what it is now. Um, but I just love this photo of this was our Valentine's show two years later. So in two years, it went from this group on the left <laughs> to this huge collective. Um, and I just think it's wonderful. But now I still work with all of these performers in Norwich. We're all still friends and part of the same community. But I work as a solo artist now and um, have my own shows. And yeah, that's that. And they still perform with me and we just do great things together. <laughs> After COVID, I let us do it, of course. That was that was a real rough patch. Um, but that is just a brief uh, introduction to me. Um, now, I want to get to know you all. So I thought in today's workshop, we're going to be building our own drag identities because that's what I had to do throughout my time becoming Lib. And um, I'm gonna guide you through, we're gonna do this and it's gonna be great fun. First things first, we're gonna need a name. So I want us to take a short time now to come up with a drag name. Now, anyone who's already interested in drag may already have a name, which you're more than welcome to use. But I have a few tricks for getting a really good one. So what you can do is take the name of your first pet and the, way, uh, the name of the first street you lived on and you put them together and it gives you a fabulous name. So um, if everyone wants to do their names and then change their names in the chat, that could be great. Or just, um, sorry, change your name on your profile. Um, and you can just, uh, oops, hold on, my bad, there we go. <laughs> um, change your name and your, um, your profile, how you can do that on the Zoom or um, post it in the chat. Either way, let's get seeing some of these names. Okay, we have Sailor Mercury. I really like Sailor Mercury. That's quite dreamy. Oh, Erin Yeager. Ooh. And as these names are coming out, potentially start thinking about, are they more of a drag queen? Are they more of a drag king? 
Are they more of a drag artist, a creature, a thing? Are they beyond all kinds of recognition <laughs> as far as gender identity goes? That's um, another key part about the drag scene in Norwich that I should have mentioned earlier is it's a very, very diverse scene. A lot of the people there are trans and non-binary. So we have drag queens, drag kings, drag artists, drag creatures, and just drags, just drags, drags, just drags. <laughs> okay, we've got Archie Croft. Ooh, Stella Marlborough. Stella Marlborough, okay. And Champagne Ocean, an ocean of champagne. Tilly Bramble. That's really cute. That feels like a drag grandma to me. <laughs> I, hold on, I'm not going to steal any of these names, but I need to write down Stella Marlborough and Champagne Ocean because they're giving me life. <laughs> Daisy Divine. Are you kidding me? Is that really? Champagne, I can't get over it. Um, that's really creating a strong image for me. So these names, they are meant to evoke a strong image and um, we're going to be creating those images throughout this workshop. But um, someone famous actually used this method to get their name. Um, she's an Australian rapper by the name of Iggy Azalea. Uh, she lived on Azalea Drive and she had an Iguana called Iggy. And that's how she got Iggy Azalea. <laughs> so it can work for anybody. It doesn't have to be a drag artist. Okay, Caramel de Bondoni. You are kidding me. <laughs> Tabby Windsor, Cookie Cannon, Izuku Midoriya. These are all fabulous names. Okay. Yeah, if you want to change your name to these, I will refer to you as your drag name throughout today's session. <laughs> um, a little background on my drag name, Liv. Um, quite simple, quite short for a drag name. People always go for something quite over the top and extravagant. Um, well, I did start off as Live, Laugh, Love, as a, um, a little bit of a play on the Live, Laugh, Love trope, you know, um, which I really enjoy. However, I was trying to just have one name, you know, like Kylie, Madonna, Fergie, um, you know, the divas, um, and just, when I was younger, because my real name is Oliver, um, I would be called Liv by my sisters because I was rather feminine for a young boy. Um, so they would just call me Liv instead, um, and Livy sometimes, but um, yeah. And so when it came to thinking about a drag name, I was like, let's just stick with that. That's the feminine version of myself. That works, let's just go with that. And um. Yeah, people say it suits me, and I um I do wonder about adding a second name sometimes or changing it up, but I don't know. We'll stick with this for now. Okay, and we've got Mint Hanabi. Mint Hanabi. Is that a pun? Is that making me say something rude? I don't think so. Because I really don't... I did this competition in London with loads of other drag queens, and they were all telling me their names, and they were all puns, and I didn't get them in. I'm just not very quick on drag name puns. So if I have said something rude, I'm very sorry. <laughs> and Teddy Valentine, Teddy Valentine. Oh, he sounds, Teddy Valentine sounds like the most gorgeous drag king who's like a bit of a crooner and a bit of a, a bit of a songstress. Okay, fabulous. Oh my God, and Tom's name is Sunny Berry. <laughs> that sounds like a Halle Berry play. <laughs> Sunny Berry St. Edmunds. Um, Okay, well, if we've all got our drag names, we will move on to the next task, which is character building, which is often what I was told the bullying at school was. So it's kind of a little joke that it's called character building. <laughs> so if everybody has their pens and paper on them, uh, I just want you to get them ready. And we're going to create a mind map with the drag name that you've uh, given. Um, Hold on, I'm just receiving a private message about my playlist. Oh, okay, so I've actually prepared a playlist for today as well to have in the background whilst we do the presentation. Um, I think Tom is going to drop the link to it in the chat um, 
but if you just want to put it on in the background quietly just so it's you know something in the background um we'll take a little minute to do that if you like um it's just a playlist i put together of a lot of songs that i've performed um throughout my drag career <laughs> no my drag career my career as a drag artist um so if any, anybody wants to listen to that while we do today then feel free um it's also available afterwards um you'll recognize the playlist because it's got my face on it covered in glitter um which to me was like an artistic thing to do that but everyone said i look like edward cullen so there's that but we'll just take a little moment Okie dokie. I don't know how good everyone is with tech. I know this would take me a lot longer to do. <laughs> but I think if um, everybody wants to start gathering up their paper and pens, um, if anyone needs me to slow down, just pop it in the chat and we will. Um, but if we have got our papers ready, <gasps> you've never had a pet. Oh my God. Okay. Is there another way to come up with a drag name? Okay. Um, there absolutely is. Okay, so do you have a favourite sweet? If you have a favourite sweet, take that, and then your favourite colour. Or your favourite colour, then your favourite sweet. Whichever way it works better. That's the other way to do it. <laughs> oh gosh, now everyone's gonna have two drag names. Yeah. I mean, some people have five by the time they sit on the one that they actually like, so. And if you don't have a favorite sweet, then I, that's, a, that's a bigger conversation we need to have. Maybe there's scarlet bonbon, green licorice, licorice green. I'm trying to think of quite a masculine sweet now. Heroes, celebrations. I've already got a drag name, I'll leave it. <laughs> Spicy m and <laughs> Oh, I knew this was going to be fun. Spicy m and M. Okay. So as you get your drag names, I just want you to write them in the middle of your paper. I've done mine digitally because I am a pro at technology. Oh, we've got Blue Ferrero. That is a beautiful name. Blue Ferrero. Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> and I just got a notification saying that Caramel de Bondoni has entered the waiting room. <laughs> Violet waffle, lovely. That sounds quite soft, like a waffle nair. Like, and I, why do I keep coming back to drag grandmas? What's wrong with me? Maybe I feel like a drag grandma. But what we're going to do is we're going to take our paper, write our name in the middle, and we're going to build a mind map of all the different ideas that we attach to our drag characters today. This is before we even draw them or know what they look like. This is what we get. This is how we get what they stand for, what they mean, what their purpose is, what their intentions are. Because it's important in drag to have a depth behind what you're doing. It's fabulous if you don't. That is also very valid if your name I mean, this is not to put another drag queen on blast, but there is a drag queen called Pasty. And that's just what she does. She's just like a pasty and it's great. But in my opinion, I think a drag artist needs a bit of uh, a bit of something to them, a bit of a bit of grit, a bit of a story, a bit of an intention, a bit of a meaning. Um, so that being said, let me explain mine. Uh, I am non-binary. And I always wanted to include that in my drag. And for a while, I did try wearing wigs. Believe it or not, I did used to wear wigs. I had a giant purple one. I had a flat red one. Ew. And um, it just wasn't working. It just felt so, it felt too facade to me. Like it felt too, like I was wearing a mask. Like the makeup is me. It's just me decorated. But to put the wig on as well and, um, Something else I used to do was wear body padding, which a lot of drag queens do now, um, where they wear hips and, uh, you know, 
um, to give them a more feminine figure. And I did try that for a long time. It looked, it looked great. It looked really, really good. But I just, I was looking in a mirror and I was performing and I was thinking, this just doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel like me. This isn't true to myself. And I think the art of drag has inherently got to be true to yourself to some degree. Um, but it's also very subjective, like you're just dressing up as um, a Greg sausage roll and having a great time. It also means a lot. I mean, it's not directly political or has any direct meaning, but the fact that that can happen in this country, that is quite a statement. <laughs> um, oh, I'm actually quite covered up today, but I'm a very hairy person. Um, so I always have body hair out as well. Um, I think it's great to ask the question, can a woman be hairy? Of course she can, she's naturally hairy. It's completely normal for women to be hairy. So to see a male as a woman that's masculine and also feminine, it really throws people, it's a great time. Um, and I like to go quite genderless with styling. Like I could have gone for a nice little dress today, but I went from my roll neck that I wear pretty much every other day <laughs> out of drag. Um, but yeah, so being non-binary is a very key part of what Liv is as a drag artist. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, the community, the community means a lot to me. I mean, I just explained earlier about how discovering that the art of drag can do that for a community of people. I, it never crossed my mind before then, before it was about being an artist and being great and being fabulous. But then suddenly you realize that you can actually change people's lives with getting together and doing something. It's just all you could ask for. So community is a huge part of what Liv does. And as I'm explaining my things, of course, just go through your row and maybe you're like way ahead of me, like blue, electric shock stripes, <laughs> pinstripes. That's great, that's great, keep going, keep going. Um, but yeah, I've always had a very maternal side to me and obviously I cannot bear my own children yet, but I can have drag children. I can have many of those as I want. And uh, I sure do. <laughs> and also getting people together is a really good way to fundraise for um, members of the community who are pursuing transition, who need some financial support and um, all other causes as well, like local uh, queer charities too. Um, getting everyone together. I mean, when people did cash before COVID, of course, but we'll just get the card machine out now. Mm. So, um, oh, we've got a Hershey Fox as well. Lovely. That's, mm, that's delicious. So another thing that I was thinking of, <laughs> another thing that I wanted to be when I was thinking about my drag persona uh, was being opulent. Uh, having some jewels, having some jewels, being quite um, glamorous and, um, when thinking about outfits to wear, um, I would always think about having jewel tones, about, uh, you know, emeralds, rubies, sapphires, um, nothing too bold for me personally. Um, if it is a bit too uh, neon or a bit too graphic, I just, it doesn't really fit my style. Style, style, I'm stylish. Um, but I have made my own style, I think. Yes, I have, no. I have, I know I have. Um, but yes, having like jewels and when I couldn't afford jewels, it would just be like um, paper mache twisted up and then paint it with metallic gold paint. And then suddenly you've got a giant gold bangle. It's, it's genius. You have to be really clever with Jack. <laughs> Cause this, I mean, it's from Amazon 20 pounds, but still when I was a student, 20 pounds was the food shop. It wasn't a sparkly necklace. <laughs> Uh, can I change my name to Sussy Barker? Can I... You can you can change that name. I'm just not going to say it out loud in case it is something naughty that you're trying to make me say. <laughs> um, and then finally, with my uh, mind map, I have done this a lot throughout my drag career, just to kind of focus and hone in on what I want to do, what I want to be. 
because with drag that's the thing you can do anything there was one point i was considering doing like um facial hair and being a bit of a drag king i was like yeah that's cool but i don't really like that for me it makes me feel a bit strange because i always deal with masculinity in my day-to-day -day life in my job so when i do drag i'm getting away from that and i want to put distance so and for every person it's going to be different I mean, I know some people like to completely not look human at all in drag because they just would rather not deal with being human <laughs> whilst they're away from their daily lives into their drag lives. Um, but as a performer, I knew it was always going to be very strong lip syncs because um, in my collective, I wasn't the skinniest, I wasn't the prettiest and I wasn't the best dancer. So my lip sync was going to be so tight and it bloody well it is it's very good <laughs> i'll show you a video later on in the presentation actually um because i just have to show off a little bit more um but divas throughout music like whitney houston dolly parton um i would say florence and the machine i'm willing to argue that case um all very emotive empowering music um just evokes feeling in me as a performer but also in the audience we both need to be having experience when the performance is happening so if this sounds like something you would like to do as a performer um put that on your mind map as well um maybe you feel like you'd want to do more fashion looks and costumes than you would potentially performers. I know some drag artists nowadays, they are active mainly on Instagram and the way they interact with the world is through their social media posts and creating a look for Instagram, posting it and getting like a great response. It's fabulous, it really is. Um, it's a great way to get yourself out there as well with um, a social media presence, um, which is a transferable skill, of course. Um, but I think it's important as well that if you do want to be a drag artist, a drag performer, that it's important to go out into the real world as well as having your virtual presence. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just a personal opinion of mine. Um, I remember when I was just starting out in drag, there'd be people who would only do um, things on the internet. And I was out in the clubs performing and out in the bar that we worked at. Um, and I was like, how come they are a drag artist, but I'm like, I've only got 100 followers and I'm working twice as hard. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't, who knows, it's all up for debate. I'm struggling with the mic. I can't dig deeper. Okay, some more specific prompts. Okay. Let's get some specific prompts. Um, things you can ask yourself. Um, okay. Let's have a think. Um, so think about your drag character. Think about who they are. Try and envision them and what they're going to do. Do they have a particular colour scheme that they like? Do they wear only a certain colour? The way I would only do dual tones. Do they only do purples or neons or primary colours or tertiary colours? Is there a colour story for them that they want to stick to? Um, is there a particular genre of music they would perform? Are they a bit of a rocker? Are they a rap artist? Are they um, classical music? Let's put that in there. Do they perform to classical music? This is very inspiring. And yeah, and what type of a performer are they? Do they kind of strut up and down the stage in their outfits? Are they quite a reserved artistic individual what kind of performer would you be are you <laughs> uh, let's have a think as well um is that helping if anyone's got some if anyone else needs a few more cues let me know and uh, i'll just give you all a bit of time to fill those out as well if you're still doing it And um, something else to consider is um, a backstory for your drag artist. Um, 
my partner goes by the name of Morag Equinox. And her story is that she, um, well, she has a few stories, but one of them is uh, that one day a little girl and her family were walking through a swamp and the little girl had a little dolly and um, she accidentally lost that dolly in the bog. And that dolly, that bog dolly is more I get quinoa. <laughs> So is there a backstory for your character? Um, I know that Moag Equinox does a lot of um, witchy things and a lot of um, quite haunted performances and um, they've got very big eyes as well so they are quite doll-like already. Um, so maybe think about your features as well that you'd like to keep in your drag character. I mean for me it was being non-binary, my hair being the most comfortable thing for me. Um, those things I brought forward into my drag character. So is there anything about you? Is there your identity, your ethnicity, your religion, your background? What, what things would you like to bring forward into it? And also inversely, it could be a way to escape those things in our real life. So are there any things you're comfortable with? That's, that's the last rule of thumb. The name sounds like a sci-fi character fighting bad guys out of space. Ooh, what, more, more I get Quinox. More I get Quinox. Mm. I always refer back to them because my backstory is, um, my sister's called me Liv. <laughs> okay, so if we've all got our mind maps ready, let's move on to task number two. Uh, this is where we illustrate the look. So we've used the skill of mind mapping to generate all these ideas. Lots and lots of ideas, I hope. I hope you're bursting with ideas. Now we're actually going to illustrate our drag artist characters. Um, as you can see from this image, this is a very rough drawing that I've done before of myself. Um, but this is the perfect way to get your ideas on paper and make things happen in real life. So first of all, before we get drawing, I'll just show you some examples of mine. Here we go. Let's take a little moment to look at all of these. Um, so for me, drawing is the most universal language that there is. Um, you draw something and the person who looks at it knows exactly what you mean. They can see it, they can imagine it as well. Um, so when you're working creatively as well, it's important to be able to share these ideas between lots of different people, like um, a graphic designer, a costume maker, um, a jewelry maker, whoever is collaborating with you on your projects, they need to understand what your ideas are. And for me, this is how to do it. So we've got all these drawings, all these images, and then this is what they happened to turn out to become through my drawings. So um, I'll show you these again later, but we'll just flick through. So if we start on the bottom, on the left-hand side, uh, this is my show at the Norwich Art Centre called Cabaret Liberté. And I wanted to have a sun dress and a stars dress. I wanted, because it was a two night show, I wanted to be the day and the night. And uh, yeah, I would just, I drew this all out and I designed it and I um, sourced all of the costumes myself. And I, um, yes, I, I got a lot of the bits off ASOS and Amazon, but I did go back and embellish everything myself with rhinestones, sequin cutouts. Um, but just having these images is a great way to look at your images and then, oh, it can actually become this. I think it's fabulous. Um, but yeah, like, and it works as well as it works for costumes and fashion, it works for makeup. If we look at the image in the centre, uh, this was for a film shoot I was working on a month ago now, and they said, we wanted you to be a drag queen. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, I do my best. So I wasn't too sure of what I was going to do, so I got my notebook out, and I just drew out this character that they wanted me to be, and then there it happened on the day. Uh, the character of Muse, um, who was a drag queen TV presenter. So yeah, that's uh, that's what I managed to do through that image. Um, 
But yeah, and like you can see in the other two, uh, this rainbow look I've got on this Progress Pride flag, um, that was for the Pride show I did on July 31st. And this costume was made for me, custom made by another NUA graduate, uh, Tessa Dykes, who is a fashion graduate. Um, and the bottom right one is me in a swimsuit. Uh, that was a poster design by Nick Gordon, who's also another NUA graduate. Um, you see, working with creatives, especially from your university, it's, it's a really great community we develop. <laughs> um, but yes, enough about me. Let's get drawing our own drag characters. So I'm going to have a little draw along with you uh, just to get us all started. So everyone got their paper and pens? Let's go. So first thing I'm going to do is draw out a body shape. Uh, if you do this in a pencil and then you can draw like finer details on top, um, so just to start the drawing. You lot are probably all great drawers, so I'm just going to rely on that because I am not the best drawer, as you can see. <laughs> so um, start off with a simple body shape. Think about your character. Are they feminine? Are they masculine? Are they, um, are they without gender? Are they just um, no kind of signifiers in their body about what the gender is? I prefer to do that for myself a lot of the times. Um, just to flatten everything out and not really give anything away, just because that feels more comfortable sometimes. But um, I'm gonna go back to a few of these drag names and think about them. Okay, so uh, Teddy Valentine, I just, I see as quite a, quite a, quite a gentleman really, but Teddy could also be a feminine name. I like the transverseness of Teddy, that it could be, it could be feminine, it could be masculine, could just be non-binary. Here we go. This is what it's all about. And Cookie Cannon, Caramel de Bondoni, like, think about your name, your drag name and how your person will be. So I'm just gonna have a quick draw as well. Feel free to make them more gorgeous than real life. I always do that. I always draw myself with a super long neck. Oh, it's looking quite fine today. It's okay. But it doesn't have to be anything precious, just something, you know, just a body outline. If you want to skip the hands, that's fine as well. <laughs> uh, yes, Tom, please ask a question as I draw. I would love a question. Uh, so Tom has asked, how did the university experience support you in finding your creative voice? Um, well, I always feel, I feel very supported by NUA, even to this day. <laughs> I was always, um, at NUA, I was always championed uh, for my kind of, for my work, really. Um, it was never put into question about, is what I'm doing art? It was always very validated as, yes, this is art and this is good. And um, yeah, I was always given a lot of time with tutors and um, the space to kind of talk about how maybe this is performance art, maybe this is social commentary and how, you know, just how my practice was valid and good and like a positive thing. Um, I did end up graduating with a first class degree as well. So, um, I mean, that really lets you know what the university thought of me and my practice. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I think as well, having a community of like-minded artists at NUA, was really beneficial as well. Um, being surrounded and having lots of time with other students to discuss our ideas and stuff um, was really beneficial. And um, a lot of collaborative exhibitions as well, lots of those which I loved. So um, I've kind of, here is mine so far. Um, I've just gone for the body, but I've also done the hair, I've been cheating. Um, 
so yeah if you want to start drawing some hair on now what kind of hair do they have is it big quaffed hair are they bold are they got spikes <laughs> do they just have a crown like what is on their head <laughs> Ooh, Theodore is giving us something. Daddy's been living there forever. I love that. I absolutely love that. That is exactly what, that is, you know, that is deep. Having a drag persona that is all about self-love and embodying who you are and all this positivity, that is, I really like that. Thank you, Teddy, for sharing that. Ooh, some fabulous questions. Okay, I'll come back to that one after we've done the hair. Um, should we just should we just work from the should we go top down? Should we just do that? So think about some face and accessories now. Um, how is the makeup? Is it quite subdued? Is it very graphic? Is it huge eyelashes and eyeliner? Is it quite, um, is there a beard? Is there a mustache? What kind of face, what face does your drag artist have? For me, it's always a lovely cheek. <laughs> uh, if you've got your colors as well, now is a great time to use them. Uh, I've only got a red pen, so I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> But drag is about making it work when you don't have everything you need. It's about being resourceful and, you know, that transfers to a lot of drag practice, I mean, a lot of art practice as well. And just in the real world, just in the wider world in general. Since I've started working at, uh, I mean, when I worked at a warehouse uh, throughout the pandemic, that was great. Um, a lot of the skills I'd learned in drag, I would be able to transfer, like um, just using whatever materials were around if we'd ran out of uh, big <laughs> tapes to um, cardboard, you know, you know, warehouse stuff. Um, but yes, that's, I've always thought. So Danvi asks, I've always thought that one must be very confident and outspoken to join drag. But you mentioned that one could also be reserved and artistic. I would love to know that is that a stereotype or a fact? And how do you handle stereotypes? Well, um, yes, I mean, a lot of the drag artists in Norwich who are the like kind of the big time performers in the scene, um, they are very reserved. They um they, <laughs> they kind of only speak to people that they know and trust and uh, they do enjoy speaking to the, you know, the whole show of people who come and see the shows, but it's just a bit more of a personal thing to them, drag is. Like um, some drag artists are very, very out there. They don't care who's watching them and what they're doing. They just like to be seen and have the stage and the spotlight. And that's all well and good, but there are artists out there who drag for them is a bit more personal it's a bit more of a a process for them and showcasing it to an audience can be quite intimate and quite um yeah personal <laughs> so um and i think having a community of drag art um a community a queer community who started seeing those shows from the beginning and have been there for a long time, that really benefits that type of reserved artist. Um, but yes, I'm just going to quickly do my drawing. How is everyone else doing? Um, I've been doing a lot of red lips lately, um, just because I have a red lip liner from MAC. Uh, it was gifted, I didn't buy it, um, which is also a big part of my drug practice, is being gifted things. Uh, I'm just going to quickly catch up with everybody. I'm just drawing my makeup now. Um, don't have to be too precious with these drawings as well. Um, this is just to get an idea of what your character will look like. 
Uh, so. <laughs> Fabulous. Face here. Now we're very quickly going to do the outfit. So is it a suit? Is it a dress? Is it got massive shoulders? Is it regal? Is it got wings on the back? What are they wearing? Use the mind map you've made to refer to to kind of conjure up an outfit of what they would look like. And think about colour schemes, think about genres that they follow, think about the time periods as well. Um, for Liv, it's always going to be a good old gown. And it's going to have rhinestones all over it because it needs to sparkle from stage. Uh, just because that's opulent and that is a good show. And of course, for Liv, there's going to be jewellery as well. Of course. It is quite sparkle, sparkle. I like to go on about how artistic and deep and personal I am, but then when it comes to jewels, I'm just like, sparkly, good. Okay. Oh, fine. We'll do an evening glove as well. That's okay. Oh, just a little bracelet on top of that as well. Okay, there we go. So here is my finished look. If you go on my Instagram after this session, you will find this exact look <laughs> that you guys are creating. Um, to recreate is human, but to create, that's divine. I don't remember where I got that quote from. Um, Oh, excuse me. Uh, Tanishika asks, I'm trying to embody an edgy aesthetic in my drag. Oh, so you're quite a sweet, passive person in real life, but you want to amp it up for the drag. Well, I would suggest going with leather, spikes, <laughs> red, <laughs> um, and sunglasses. Sunglasses change everything. I like I cannot express enough how much a sunglass changes the look. Um, but I'm just going to quickly go through some more options and some ideas uh, as we finish up our drawings and head on to the next task. Uh, so here's a few very famous examples. Uh, Trixie Mattel, uh, off of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 7 and All Stars 3. Uh, this is an example of someone whose style has changed to fit how their drag character has changed. Um, potentially one day I'll be wearing wigs again. Who knows? Drag characters are always changing and evolving. And for Trixie Mattel, it's gone from being a Barbie doll into a country singer, into the 60s mod fashion style, um, and just small details that really amp up a look and a costume. Look at the, the heel on Trixie Mattel's costume for the country singer look. There is a cowboy stirrup on the back of the pump of the stiletto. Beautiful, beautiful little detail. And it's just got that edge of camp that drag really likes. <laughs> that just makes it great. Um, I've seen this costume in real life as well. I saw her perform in this. Um, a London drag king that I've had the privilege of working with is Bo Jangles. He is absolutely phenomenal. You have to look him up on Instagram once we're finished. Give him a follow. He's incredible. Um, and his persona, his drag persona, is from 1940. And so he tries to wear everything that's time period accurate. <laughs> so uh, what time period is your character from? What's their backstory? Um, Bo always starts off with um, a story before he sings. He's a fabulous live singer. And he'll talk about um, the telegram and the blitz, and it's uh, it's a really good time. Um, another example: BB Zahara Benet, Drag Race season one and uh, All Stars three. There's a quite a few seasons now. Um, something that BB does with her drag is bring in her um, ethnicity and her country, which is Africa and Cameroon. And um, so using patterns and hair types and hairstyles in her drag that really celebrates who she is and where she comes from, um, especially in like today's world, especially in America, this is 
a really great statement to be making as a drag artist, let alone as an individual. Um, so I'm just reading the question and then, yes. Um, and then of course, Ginny Lemon, bit of a rogue choice for someone to look to for fashion inspiration, but something Ginny does is use really strange materials. So she like uses, I mean, she's got a crochet wig on. Like is, <laughs> think about your drag character and the materials their clothes are made from. I mean, there's a very popular thing to do in drag is when you want a black gown is to just use bin bags. And like, you can twist them and like make patterns with them. You can quilt them. And it's kind of this thing about drag that it's using these really unconventional materials to create something that looks expensive, that looks interesting, that looks really cool. Like my paper mache and gold paint bangles. I, I should have bought them down. I should have shown you those. I've got them in my cupboard. <laughs> okay. Uh, so if everybody's got their images drawn out, uh, if you want to scan this QR code, this will open up the Padlet. Um, if we do need some technical assistance. <laughs> no, Liv. Um, Hi. <laughs> this, at this stage, Sonia Berry is just going to take over just for a moment, just to explain how Padlet works. So in terms of what uh, we'd like people to do, if you'd like to share your work with us, we'd love to see it. Um, all you need to do is if you have a smartphone, you might want to open up your camera app and scan the barcode that's on screen now. That will lead you through to our Padlet board, which is being managed by Gavin. And basically, you can click on the pink um, plus symbol in the bottom right of the Padlet board. And there you can upload your work onto the board so we can all see it. Um, so that would be awesome. If you're, you're feeling able and, and comfortable with, with um, sharing your work with us, we'd love for you to do that. So once again, all you need to do is open up your camera app scan the QR code that's on screen now, and then you can put, um, press or click on the pink plus symbol, it says, which is in the bottom right of the screen. And from there, you'll be able to upload your work, take a photograph and upload your work to share with us. So we'd really love to see it. And I'm going to pop the Padlet link into the chat as well, if you'd like to access it that way as well. Okay, back to you, Liv. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I've just uploaded mine to the Padlet. And there we go. So you can have a closer look at my uh, drawing skills. <laughs> <coughs> Apologies. It's important to have a straw if you're drinking in drag. You need to protect your lipstick and also the environment. So I've got a bamboo straw. So Tom's just put the link in the chat for the pad Padlet. Oh, Padlet, I thought it was called Pablet. Okay, never mind, it's Padlet. There we go. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Starting to get some through, this is fabulous. Caramel de Bondoni. Oh my gosh. And then, who is, who's is this one? I don't think a name was posted with it. Come on, fess up. Who is this gorgeous woman? <laughs> oh, I'm really liking the um the styling in this one. It's giving me very um like a Marie Antoinette reference with the hair and the um the cheeks and the lips. And uh, I think it's really interesting when we reference uh, monarchs of the past. Um, like, I think Marie Antoinette is quite popular because, um, you know, the French Revolution and let them eat cake. And also in terms of fashion and makeup, it's such an interesting period of um, history. Sorry, I, I work at Nottingham Castle now. And... Um, uh, okay. And um, sorry, yes, I work at Nottingham Castle now and I've been learning about lots of history. So now I'm like starting to integrate history into my uh, understanding and thoughts on drag. 
uh, especially since we have, you know, historical queens and then contemporary queens. I think it's fabulous. Okay, we've got some more drawings coming through. Oh, wow. You see, I knew you'd all be great at drawing. Gosh, I should have tried harder. <laughs> Oh wait, I don't need to show you on my phone. You've all got the Padlet as well, haven't you? Okay. <laughs> yeah, if um could I share my Padlet screen? Uh yes, Tom, if you would like to share your Padlet screen, um, because I've only got mine on my phone and it's not it's not that great. <laughs> Uh, we'll just take a look at these drawings as they come on through. Right, hello everyone. I'm just going to share my screen. This might stop you from sharing. Um, okay. Liv. So be prepared. Let's, okay. Let's see. Um, just be a moment. Right. Here we go. Right. Sorry, that's a bit of chaos. There we go. <laughs> ah, here we go. Oh. Any any comments? Any thoughts? Any suggestions? Wow, I'm uh, I'm really enjoying the reference of Cookie Cannon having kind of. I'm seeing a, a reference to the Cookie Monster, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think referencing and drag is very, very fun to do. Whether that was intentional or not, I mean, pop culture and references is just part of a huge part of drag, whether we're thinking about it or not. Great. These are fantastic. Wow, I love these. That is fashion. I'm feeling very inspired by these. I want that outfit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a buzz cut. Yes. Wow. Metallic wow. blues. Yeah, I really enjoy this one. I'm just going to see if we've had any more posted through. Oh, yes. <laughs> Tilly Bramble. Oh, the Brambles at the left. Drag Grandma. <laughs> New legs. These are fabulous. Stella Marlborough. The Thank hearts you. on the cheeks. Wow. Look at this. Wow. Fantastic illustration. That's amazing. You see that line around the back? I'm kind of interpreting that as it could be a cloak or a piece of soft sculpture or I mean, I'm, I'm, maybe if I took a closer look, I'd read the note, but <laughs> when you get collaborating with other artists, they'll interpret your drawings one way and then whole new ideas start coming about for them. Fantastic. Oh, extra one, fantastic. Um, is that Sage Pepper? Sunglasses, sunglasses. Excellent. Wow. These are fantastic. Keep them coming as well. And we'll, we'll come back to this a bit later. Yeah. Brilliant. So if you'd like to share again. Uh, yes, I will. Uh, let me make sure I get the right one. Here we go. Yep. Participants can now see your PowerPoint. Fabulous. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I've just got these pictures again, just so we can look at the way that they become real life costumes and images once more. So if drag is something that you'd like to have a go at outside of the workshop, um, definitely take the drawings you've done today and, um, you know, maybe create a garment, create a, a costume or, a makeup or try creating your drag artist as in real life. Um, 
I mean, I've been going on about how doing it for real is like the best way to to do drag. So um, yeah, I definitely encourage that uh, after we're done today. Um, okay, so we'll move on to the final task of today, which is the styling shoot. Um, so being a drag artist, you very, very quickly learn that you are also your publicist, your photographer, your social media manager, your video editor, your audio editor, uh, your makeup artist, your hairstylist, your fashion designer, your costume maker. You do so, so much with drag. And a huge part of it is promotion and visual imagery. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, uh, maybe you've already got them. I think you've already got them. If you haven't, that's cool. We'll have some time now. Um, we're going to gather three objects and we're going to style them and photograph them. And these three objects are going to represent our drag character and what they are embodied by, what they are engendered by, who they are and what they would have. So if you've not got them already, I'm going to go grab some now. Feel free to do so. Um, I haven't got mine on me because they're covered in fake blood. Um, but that's, that's uh, yeah, I've just got my images today. So <laughs> I didn't have time to clean the fake blood, the fake blood off. I'm very sorry. Um, but my images that I went for, um, my items, sorry. Uh, I went for a artificial rose. Um, because you know it's it's beautiful, but it is fake, uh, <laughs> which I think is quite funny. Uh, quite represents drag as a whole, um, especially drag makeup. Um, and that rose was uh, uh, plucked from the head of an audience member at the Valentine show, which was the last show we did before lockdown. So personally, as well, that that item means a lot to me. So. Whilst you're get, gathering some items, think about, um, you know, personal attachments to items, uh, colours, textures, uh, things that are shiny, things that are matte, um, things that are soft or hard or um, all kinds of different items that you would use to embody your drag character. Um, the purple necklace I have, it looks it looks black in that image, but it is it is quite deep purple. Um, that is one that I wore in my pride outfit for the uh, intersex purple circle, um, which was added to the pride flag this year. Um, and I thought since it was brand new, let me get a nice necklace to represent that. Um, but like deep jewels and jewel tones again, is coming back to this idea that I've been working on for a while towards jewel tones. My jewels have to be jewel toned, thank you very much. Um, and then this piece of uh, this chain with moons and suns on. Uh, obviously, I was speaking earlier about having my moon and my stars, my stars and my sun looks for my shows. Um, and this piece of uh, beading, I don't even know how to describe this. I've just had it for years. Um, my One of my best friends gave it to me off of her Christmas tree six years ago <laughs> because um, she just thought it was beautiful and I thought it was too and it it's quite like if I ever lost this piece of beading this little chain I'd be heartbroken so that means a lot to me and it kind of represents those night and day in drag out of drag it it represents a duality for me um it's also shiny so of course so um if people want to let me know in the chat uh, if you just do a thumbs up once you've got some items ready. And I have to say that uh, Young Matilda, the drag puppy, is being very, very good. <laughs> so uh, with these objects that you've got, uh, what you need to do now is position them together in a way that could be interesting. Position them in an interesting way. 
uh, if you've got backdrops that you can put them on, like maybe you've got wood or you've got something metal or something that's a different color, like pink or blue, pink and blue, boy and girl. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, um, or greens, purples, what colours would you have if you're creating an image that represents your drag character? Um, and as we're positioning these, we're thinking about photographing them, again, to put them on the Padlet. Padlet. Um, so think about as well the lighting that you're going to have. Are you going to have a flash? Are you going to do it with natural light by a window? Or is it going to be quite shadowy? How is that representing your character? Um, I'll just show you a couple of examples I did with my objects. Um, I got quite close up in one of my photos because um, I wanted to, you know, get into all of the details and all the nooks and crannies of all of the materials and see close up that this is, is this rose is made of fabric. <laughs> and um, putting the shiny hard surfaces of those gems and those beads with the softness of the flower, it's called, makes for a quite nice, quite a nice image. Um, and also the light reflecting off. I mean, photo photography is all about light, right? So getting a nice relationship with the light off your images is really interesting as well, really good to do. Um, so if, whenever you're ready, just start snapping away and um, photograph your objects. Ah, yes. Um, and something to think about as well is uh, the rule of thirds through photography. Um, yeah, I, I did photography on my degree as well. Yeah. Um, you're also your own photographer, hey. Um, so the rule of thirds is in your frame, if you split it up into three thirds, uh, let me just try, I'll try again. It's the rule of thirds. So you've got your photo frame there, your image will be here. If you split this into three, oh, I'm trying to draw like this. Then balancing something on this line or on this line makes for a more interesting image. Um, and I think you can also do it that way as well. Um, with some uh, digital cameras, um, when you look through the lens, you'll see a grid like that as well. Um, the grid will be in the viewfinder. And like balancing something just there or just there, putting it in the rule of third area just makes for a very more much more dynamic image, shall we say. Uh, which, which part is the main focus? Precious asks, um, what would you like it to be the focus? Um, I mean, I think for me, the rose is the bigger part of the image because that's, that stands out more to me. So um, think about your objects, which one is the strongest relation to your drag character or which one looks the best? Um, I think drag is quite a, uh, you know, it's quite a, a image-based thing, um, as well as the uh, the brighter colours drawing in the eye as well. Um, so things to think about as well. Uh, also, when you're taking your photos, think about the negative space. Um, with graphic designers putting posters together, as a graphic designer putting your poster together, you'll need somewhere to put the text to let the people know about the name of the performer, the venue, what's the show called? Where is it gonna be? What time is it? Uh, event planning, something else you have to do as a drag artist. <laughs> yes, please. If um, you've still got the Padlet up, then please send on through your photographs and we will have a little look at those as well. I'm really excited to see actually. Because these images that we take, these can be used for, um, you know, potentially cover photos on social media. Uh, they can be used as content on social media or backgrounds for um, images. Whole social media presence is so important for drag artists and it's so image based. So creating a lot of content to keep your virtual presence good is <laughs> quite taxing sometimes. 
So to be more creative and more inventive with the way you create your content, I think it just makes for a lot more well-versed artistic drag artist. <laughs> So I've made a few, whoops, no. I'm gonna show you that after we've looked at the other ones on Padlet. Or should I show it you now? I already accidentally did it, okay. Uh, oh yes. So if you think about the examples we looked at earlier as well, if anyone's struggling, think about what Ginny Lemon would have in their picture. They'd probably have a lemon slice, of course, because you know, that's Ginny. Uh, maybe they'd have like a ball of yarn, some neat knitting needles. Um, and how could they interact together to make a really interesting image? Oops. Uh, yes, so if we take a look at the Padlet now and see how everyone's been getting on, I think when I say that, Tom will magically reappear. <laughs> Sorry, Sunday. Hello again. <laughs> right, I am going to clunk my way through this again and try to share my screen with you. So please bear with, and I will get that up on screen for us. Okay, so these are looking fantastic. They really are. Such great images. I don't oh, know if wow. you can see my screen now yet. Oh, wow. So if we click on a few of these. Oh, okay. Wow. I don't even know what they are anymore. They've become a new image. Look at that. That, that one's is really lovely. tastefully done. Wow. Yeah. Nice placement as well, the composition yeah. of just putting everything in the corner with the wood. That would, that would really work with a graphic design. Look at this one, this is <laughs> Wow. What, what would you say that suggests of a personality for a drag artist? I mean, I'm thinking definitely a halloween -y type artist. <laughs> it's kind of scary and playful at the same time. Yeah, it's given me um, quite comedy, quite, a, it's very humorous. Yeah, yeah. Wow, right, let's see if the, we've had any more come through at this stage. Oh, we've had some fantastic illustrations as well, by the way, that have come through since. Oh yeah, we have some new ones. Wow, I love this. Such good concentration. I love how the details on the face, and yet the hair is like the main feature. It's yeah. really clever. I love and this one. Of it, That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, really simple, but beautiful. That looks like more equinox. <laughs> <laughs> Hershey Fox, we've got butterfly wings. Great, love the flares as well. Yeah. Definitely a time period being thought about with that. Wow, that's beautiful as well. Really elegant. Fab. Fantastic. Right, let's see. Oh, hello. I love the facial hair. Bunny Mercury. <laughs> Is it, do, you, do you reckon there's anything to do with Freddie Mercury going on there as well? Gotta be. Gotta be. I love it. <laughs> let's, let's see if there's been any more. I think referencing Freddie, paying tribute to Freddie is. Fabulous. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Quite mysterious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that one's very similar to, to this one. Yeah. That is a lovely necklace. I was gonna say that it looks like the type of thing that you might you might enjoy. I well, might need a recommendation of where it's from. <laughs> it looks quite it looks quite noisy though. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I like how some of these are a compilation of different objects, and then some of them have a, they stick to a certain narrative mm -hmm. as well. I think that's quite cool. Yeah. And I like with the mask one that the, um, the chain is going through the eyes yeah. of the mask. I would really like that. That's great. Uh, <clears throat> 
what I quite like about this one as well is even though these things in the background, they kind of, it feels like they're not meant to be part of the image, but all of a sudden we, we look at the main event and then we're like, oh, what are the little secrets that are going yeah. on back here just off camera? Daisy Divine. Oh, wow. Mary Queen of Scots inspired. Nice. Fantastic. And let's just see if there's been any more at this stage. Great. Okay. I, I don't think there's any more at this stage, but this is something we could um, come back to at the end if, if you'd like to. Yes, absolutely. Uh, let me just get my screen shared again. Uh, here we go. Nice. So, uh, fabulous images, everybody. Um, many apologies. This earring on my right ear is killing me. I've got no idea why. Um, really painful. <laughs> so I'll just show you a few examples here. Um, so these are images I made uh, and then kind of used an overlay on Photoshop. Um, like Photoshop for drug artists is absolutely key. You need to brush up those images, smooth out any stubble or whatever is there you don't want to be there. Um, you know, clean up the makeup where it went wrong in real life. Um, but like, like I was saying about content creation, layering your images together, um, Photoshop or photo editing apps, there's loads on uh, the app store. Um, really interesting ways to get new content and new images out there. And um, also just to inspire yourself. I mean, I'm looking now at the, um, I don't know if you can see my pointer on my, my clicker, but the, the star bead that's on my face just there and the, the like the reflections of the light, those dots, that's looking to me like a new makeup look I could try. And quite, yeah, maybe introducing shapes onto the face maybe through like with liner or eyeshadow colors. I, I don't know, but like, this is a, these are great little experiments to do to really like think about something new to do with your drag, especially if you wanted to switch things up after a while. <laughs> Um, and then on the right, I've got an example of, you know, a, a potential poster design, um, Live Norwich Art Centre, 6th of November, which is a real life show, by the way. Um, and that's a great way to create a poster that has insinuations about who you are as an artist, but not actually giving everything away. Um, especially if you're quite uh, established in your scene, you don't want to be giving away like too many images again and again. Um, because you know, yes. Okay, that does bring us to the end of our tasks today. So we should now have a fully fledged blueprint of a drag artist that you can go away with today and make into real life drag artists. And uh, let me know when you do, and we'll get you on stage. Let's make it happen. <laughs> so, um, all of the skills that we've worked on today, like mind mapping, character design, um, building ideas off of, um, you know, color schemes and transferring that into photography and graphic design. This is a great way to, um, and fashion illustration as well. Um, these all lead on to very good skills in like designing and building just from a few simple cues that you've created yourselves you've managed to create a whole identity that you can play with, you can use, you can perform with. You could create a video game character with this. It's, it's so transferable what drag involves. And um, I mean, for me, like doing one mind map, doing one mind map and taking one image that can stretch me to have posters for at least three months with fresh imagery. Um, uh, social media content and keeping that visual presence online going good because for the drag industry it's quite important to have that other industries it does waver but um <laughs> I just keep going about how image-based drag is but it is um and just experimenting and being playful that's the other key thing about drag is that it's fun it's yes it has deep meanings behind it and there's political and social things that go with it but actually having a good time, I think is the most fundamental part of drag. 
did I did I stop you there? Sorry. No, I was I was coming to the end anyway. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. What a really interesting, resourceful, inspiring workshop it's been. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to say a few final uh, comments and, and thoughts. And, but if you do have any questions for Liv, please pop them into the chat. And it would be lovely if, if you have any questions for Liv around drag culture, around the workshop, anything, we'd, we'd love to hear it. Also, we might have a little um, cheeky look at the Padlet board as well. Um, so if you do want to keep on uploading your images, we'll just have a quick, a quick look at that a bit later as well, because it's really important that, that we get a sense of what you've been up to and how you've been responding uh, to what we've been doing. So to finish, I've got a little bit of an outro. And then I'll hand back over for a few moments. So um, before we finish up today, I just want to remind you that we uh, have been running a wide range of workshops across the summer school series. And you'll be able to get a hold of these through past session recordings. So Gavin is in the background. He's just going to pop into the chat um, the, the link to the summer school series. So that's where you can um, book your recordings for, for this session and a variety of others. The sessions have covered all sorts of things in the past. So um, one that we did recently that we did a couple of weeks ago was the creative first aid kit, which kind of crosses over a little bit with some of the things we've been touching on today. Um, we have been looking at character design skills once again that complements this session. And also the art of asking questions, which is really useful if you're thinking about building a creative portfolio for university. All of our workshops have been designed to give you an insight into lots of different areas you could take your creativity. Um, and suggest that the variety of jobs that are out there. And Liv's done an amazing job today at suggesting all those different creative avenues that are involved within the drag artistry scene. Um, Gavin's gonna be putting a link of the Your Creative Future booklet and um, to highlight over 150 different creative paths that you might want to explore with your creativity. If you haven't already, you can book your place. Oh, hang on, that's an old line that I should have taken out of this script. Um, you can't book your place on the, these sessions anymore because this is the last one, but you can book your recordings, as I mentioned before. Um, as we have been mentioning, you might be interested in receiving an, an, an official NUA certificate, summer school certificate, um, to kind of highlight how you've been working with us. And this is fantastic for UCAS applications in particular to show that you've been proactive and going beyond the classroom to get engaged with your creativity and to push yourself in different ways. To get a hold of one of these certificates, all you need to do is to attend six of our 12 workshops. Now, if you haven't been able to attend all of them previously, you can actually watch um, the recordings and that still counts towards your certificate. Um, we want to see work from at least three of your workshops that you've been engaged with. And we'd love to see um, how, how you've responded to them by just sending us your work at student.recruitment at nua.ac.uk. And please be aware that Padlet submissions that you've been sending in today, they don't count as part of your submission. Um, the outcomes um, could be something that you've made as part of the workshop today, or it might be something that you do a little bit later on outside of the workshop time. Either way is absolutely fine. You can submit these um, collectively in one email to us, or it might be that you want to submit these individually in a series of emails. Either way is absolutely fine, um, but it, it helps us if you put the titles of the workshop into the title of the email. Uh, the initial deadline for this is the 6th of September, so that's actually next Monday. Although if you do need a little bit more time, then do let us know. And we'll be sending out the certificates when we've had all the submissions processed in around October time. We also really want to see what you've been making. Um, if you could send that to us over Instagram, that would be fantastic. So um, our tags for that are at NUA Outreach and at Take Your Place underscore HE, which Gavin's going to be putting into the chat once again. We'll be sharing some of our favourite pieces that have been made throughout the series, so please do get involved. Each week we are also giving away an exclusive NUA chilli bottle, and this week is the only week I've actually had one to show. So this is it. I think these are absolutely beautiful and they are highly coveted by most staff members at NUA. So if you would like to win one of these, 
um, then please complete the feedback form that we'll be sending you at the end of each week. We, it's really useful for us to know what you've enjoyed and also what we can make better for the future. So that's effectively it from me. We'll be hanging, hanging out for a few more minutes, having a little look at the Padlet board. And if you do have any questions for Liv, once again, please do pop those into the chat and we'll look to get her to answer those before we close things up today. But other than that, if you do need to head off at this stage, thank you so much for joining us and we hope to see you again. Cheers. Right, Liv, would you like to have a look at the Padlet board? Yes, um, I've also got a video of a performance to share everybody. Yes, of course, let's do um, that. As like a, you've got everything together, now time for the stage. <laughs> okay. So before anyone goes, I've just got something I want to show you all very quickly. Um, so this is a video from a performance uh, that I did at my first show back after the COVID-19 lockdowns. Um, it was Cabaret Liberté, as I mentioned earlier. And um, yeah, this was how we actually closed the night was with this performance. So um, just like, you know, as uh, we finished the workshop, I'll just show you this little, um, this little video. So here is uh, Liv in Cabaret Liberté at the Norwich Arts Centre earlier this year. Cares and troubles are gone. There we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I thought I'd just play you all out today with that. <laughs> that was beautiful. What a perfect way to finish. That's great. Um, so we've just had um, a, a question around the summer school series. I've just looked to answer to that one. Um, so I booked to attend six workshops, but because of the time zone, some of them were hosted at 4 a.m., Good effort making it if you did. Um, I couldn't attend those. Okay, fair play. But I've seen the recordings and done the work. Can I still get a certificate? Absolutely, you can. Um, please just send over the work to us um, at the student recruitment uh, email. And uh, yes, we'll make sure that you get a certificate. Thank you for sticking with us as well. That's fantastic. Um, we're getting a lot of thank yous, of course. Can we send more than three workshops? Also, um, Will we get the certificate sent to our emails? Um, yes, you can send the um, more than three workshops um, worth of work in. That's absolutely fine. And um, we can send the certificate over email. We can also send it in the post as well. If you drop that onto the email, I believe Sam um, has, uh, the intention is for us to send out them out physically, but if you'd like them over email, then please let us know. Um, so, Thank you. So, oh, you've got such love, Liv. Um, <laughs> Thank you, everybody. It's been great. Thank you for having me. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, when will the worksheet for this be available? What we are trying to, to do is make sure that this, the worksheet for the session will be available um, by next Friday is when we'll be looking to send it out. I'm looking to send that out over email. Um, so you should be receiving it then. Um, Wonderful. If you do have any other questions, please just let us know. Liv, do you mind if we have a little sneaky peek at the Padlet board again? Yes, absolutely. To, to round off, and then um, and then I think we'll, we'll um, close things for today. Okay. Yeah. Um, brilliant. I wonder if many people were listening to the soundtrack as well. 
Oh, yes. Um, oh, yeah. And I will pop my Instagram in the chat as well. That's been that would be fantastic. Since it was asked for so nicely. <laughs> Yeah, feel Excellent. free to check out my uh, other work and, you know, all the other stuff. Here we go. Hey, we've had some great entries. Oh, wow. Here we go. Look at this. Oh, Violet chocolate. Oh, the purple colour scheme. Dairy milk chocolate. I'm feeling it. Oh, nice, nice. Look at that. That is such a great choice. <laughs> wow. Brilliant. I just like the way it's laid down. It's reclining as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, this, this could be used for an, an advert for a bunch of different things. Right. So much commercial value to it. Wow. I love the kiss on the paper. That's I really like that. It's like an event being sponsored by Dolce & Gabbana as well. I yes. Ooh. Ooh, that's cool. Bit of stitch work. Eye for an eye. Ooh, it's got a serious edge to it. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I quite, I quite relate to that. I think. I yeah. feel that that's a bit of me. That yeah. <laughs> what is it about it that you can relate to? I think the gold. <laughs> I think, yeah, it's also since the weather changed, I've been ready for Christmas. So I think that's it as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, yes, it, is, it has got that festive vibe, hasn't it? Mm. Wow. I think that's uh, the House of Days next, um, next promotional poster. Yes. Great. Okay, I, I think they, I'll just check to see if we've had any extras sent through. Oh, yeah. Cool. Wow, that one's kind of edgy, isn't it? Yeah. Th that one's got a real attitude to it because of the scissors. Yeah, I really like that. There's a little caption to it as well. Oh, what's that caption saying? I wanted to reflect my ethnicity through embroidery and detailing. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I, awesome. I totally get that, totally get that. That's a great way to inter include that in your drag persona, that's really cool. Ooh, Daisy Divine. Everything's got inspired, oh. yes. I can't get over these drawings, these are incredible. They can though, yeah. Cool, really cool. Really thoughtful as well, and you really get a sense of a narrative behind this character. Yeah, definitely. Wow. And that, that's got a definite kind of performer, powerful persona as well. Oh, yeah. I quite, I quite like this illustration. <laughs> style. Nice. I do as well. I can see that <laughs> makeup. I can see that being drawn out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for sending those over. It's so exciting to see what you've been up to, to see what's been inspiring you. Oh, wow, what a lovely image to finish on. Beautiful flower. <laughs> yeah. Bea flora. That's really nice. Great. Well, with that, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm just going to check the chat, see if we've got any, any further questions. Um, okay, I, I think, I think, oh, how can we submit today's work? Yeah, just email us at student.recruitment at anyway.ac.uk with the title of the workshop and we will look to send it over to you. That would be fantastic. Um, Liv, do you have anything that you would like to Oh, do you want to do you want to say where, where you can get your playlist? Uh, and yes. What is your playlist? Can you tell, talk us through it just, just before you head off? So, so um, yeah, the playlist that's been linked in the chat. Um, I just popped it together for this workshop. Um, it's full of songs that I performed that, um, you know, I've, I've done a lot of songs over, <laughs> over the years. I've had to do a lot of different 
themed nights and all that. So um, the songs I've got in this playlist, the ones that actually mean a lot to me and I really enjoyed performing. Um, we've got Spectrum by Florence and the Machine there, which was my first like big stage performance. Um, and I just, I was an alien crashed from space and then I was yellow and it was fabulous. And yeah, I've got Patti Smith because the night belongs to lovers. That was when I first went to a, um, I was performing in an alternative drag show and they wanted me to like <laughs> be a bit more alternative. <laughs> So I was like, Patty Smith is as far as I can go. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but wow. yeah, just have a listen. I think they're all very empowering songs, really um, inspiring songs. Yeah, I really love them. Great, great. And Thank uh, you. I've also got as well, um, if anyone has any more questions today about uh, local queer communities and uh, any issues with being LGBTQ+, um, I've got a few links on the PowerPoint here. Um, I've just realised they're not, I'm not able to link those. I can put them in the we chat. We can do this. We, we can pop those into the chat now. I, I think they're on our, yeah. our sheet. If, if Gavin, if you're, if you're still there. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. Ah, thanks, Gavin. Um, yeah, the Norfolk LGBT plus project is um, local. Um, and Stonewall and Mermaids UK are both uh, national. Um, but they've all got great resources on one, you know, being queer and what it means and how to find community and build it for yourself um, because it's really important that we do that as a community and especially through lockdown uh, online resources were really really useful for a lot of us um, and mermaids is also trans-centered as well so perfect thank you for for dropping those in we'll, we'll add those to the worksheet as well it'll be coming out um, next week um other than that i think we're going to bring things to a close there thank you once again everybody for taking part thank you so much Liv, for wrapping up what's been a really wonderful series and uh, thank you gavin thank you Liv, um oliver uh, olivia in the background as well that have been helping out with this session it's been such a treat and we look forward to seeing you again somewhere else cheers bye-bye thanks everyone bye